people, and you're watching Spotlight in Paradise with Henry White. Hello and welcome to another edition of Spotlighting Paradise. I'm your host, Henry White. We are on location at Pulaski Park with one of our most unique businesses in the valley. Yes, we're talking biz with the pedal people. You've seen them, folks. You've seen them on their bikes around town. Rain, hell, sleet, or snow. You've seen them out. You wonder, what are these people doing? What are they hauling? Well, we're here to talk to him today. And again, we're gonna talk biz with one of the co-founders, Ruthie Woodring. Hey, Ruthie. Hey, Henry. Hi, welcome. Thanks. Thank you. And don't forget, folks, you're gonna meet the rest of the staff as well. But we're gonna start with Ruthie right now. We're gonna jump right into it because we got a lot to yeah, talk right. about. So tell the folks out there, our viewers, what is the Pedal People? Um, well, we're a workers' cooperative that hauls trash and recycling and compost in the city of Northampton. Um, we do curbside pickups for around 500 customers. Um, that's the bulk of our business. We also have a contract with the city where we empty all the public barrels downtown using that stinky trailer. Right. We do CSA farm share deliveries. We deliver for food for Valley Green Feast, another worker cooperative, and Mother Herb diaper service. Really? Um, yeah. So it's and not just. So it's not just hauling trash around and picking up trash, it's a, it's a myriad of different services as well. Yeah, I mean, basically we're a hauling business, but trash is the real dependable right. source of stuff to haul. That's what people see when yeah. they see you guys around town here. And if you guys see, I mean, there's trash here, and I don't think we, could, we got it in the shop, but there's actually a mattress over there, folks. <laughs> so, okay, so how did this actual business come about? Well, let's see, I had just moved here from Chicago um, to be with Alex, who already lived here. That's right. Alex is the other co-founder there. Alex is the other co-founder. Shout out um, to Alex right there. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And when I lived in Chicago, I'd been a bike messenger. I'd used the bike trailer to haul like food for the, the soup kitchen and stuff like that. And so I was used to hauling things with my bicycle and trailer and I didn't have a car and it was just how I did things. And when I moved here, like Alex didn't have a car either, and he had recently gotten a bike trailer okay. to run his own errands. And so I moved here. I didn't really have work. I was looking for something that felt meaningful and mm -hmm. fun to do. And and I was like, well, the system here, like the city, doesn't provide curbside pickup. People, a lot of people are paying for it. Um, it doesn't come out of the tax base. So the people that are paying for it, they're paying a trucking company to do that. Well. We can do that. I can do that with human power. Right. Maybe they'll pay us instead. So, you know, we didn't know if it would work economically, if we would be competitive, mm -hmm. but things worked out really great. Um, Alex and I decided that, that together we would give this thing a shot. Um, I had some more of the like, winter biking experience, I think, and he had more aptitude for the business end of things. Right. Um, yeah, so we started in. December of 2002 with one customer. Really? Still a customer. It's still a customer to it today? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, That's but, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we've just grown gradually as we've gotten more customers. We've brought in more pedal people. I think there's about 12 of us really? now. Really? That That's what I was going to ask you. We're going to get to them. There's 12 of them folks out there. So, and, um, so let's go back here. 2002 is when you first started. So if I do my math calculations correct, you're coming up on a 10-year anniversary. Yeah, this this is our 10-year anniversary. We're pretty excited. It's also the recognized as the International Year of the Cooperative by the of the International Year of the Cooperative by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. 2012 is, um, and we're planning a big bash here in Pulaski Park on September 22nd. Wow! Um, it's open to the public. Anyone can come. We're hoping to give away pizza and have fun games right, and right. things. Right. Oh. So you heard that, folks, out there, and we're going to talk a lot more about this anniversary celebration day um, in a little while. But I want to stay on and, and, and get a little more meat and potatoes about what you guys actually do. I know you, you, you gave us the general. Um, talk about w what happens um, 
give, give us the, the, the blow by blow on what happens once they leave to go on their journey to, to haul. Like an so, average day? Like an average day. An average day. Absolutely. Um, yes. Well, first it starts with a good breakfast. There you go. That's right. I, you <laughs> yeah. know what? I saw some good breakfast here this morning here. Some raisin cookies or something. And that might have been like the second or third oh, breakfast. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, then depends on the weather. You want to make sure you've got the appropriate gear, whether it's a winter day and you pack extra clothes mm -hmm. or um, a summer day. Make sure you have extra water and whatever, whatever you need for the weather. Um, Make sure you got your uh, blue bags mm -hmm. if you're taking things to the transfer center. You got your extra bungee cords. You got your gloves. You got your dirty clothes. You got, right, exactly. Um, so you get all your stuff together and you. So you hit, get your gear together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you hitch up your bike and your trailer. We have about 10 different trailers and they live at different people's houses. Right. So most people have a trailer convenient to them, either at their house or, or nearby. So you right. go hitch up your trailer. And then... So they get to take a trailer home? Is that a perk? Um, yeah, if a trailer lives <laughs> at a federal person's house, they can use it for their own personal use. Um, yeah, okay. the more trailers out there and use that's the That's right, that's so, right. And they all say um, pedal people on them too, right? Pretty yeah. much. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so you... For the curbside pickups, mm -hmm. um, you most people have a set route that they do. For example, people do a, like a Tuesday, a route every Tuesday and every Thursday, or a Monday, Wednesday, Friday route schedule, or something like that. And so each Monday that they work, the route is usually pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Some customers are weekly, some are bi-weekly, some are monthly. So there's some variation in that. Okay. But in general, it's a pretty similar route each right. day that you work. And so yeah, you ride up to the first customer, and you, we were picking up trash bag trash we pick up paper cardboard recyclables we pick up container recyclables and we pick up compost wow kitchen scraps so we've got those four different items as well as other things well, that they put right. out like clothing donations scrap metal right. whatever so but those main four that we have to organize and sort load in the trailer and then go to the next house um the long trailers like right. the one that Alex and Annie are on. Mm -hmm. We can people could probably get like ten customers on one of those trailers, I guess on average. The shorter trailers like that, you can probably get, I don't know, six or eight households worth of mm -hmm. trash. Um, so yeah, we'll load up the trailer, get as much stuff as you can on there, go to the transfer center, either Locust Street right. um, or Valley Recycling down on South Street drop your load and then go get another load. Most people do, I would say, the three runs in a day. That's wow. a day's route. Probably wow. takes like four or wow. five hours. Right, right. Um, but we're, it's pretty flexible. People can choose to do a route as short or as long as they want. Oh, okay. Which route is popular? I live downtown. I always see a downtown um, pedal person. You mean with the uh, orange trailer? With the, exactly, yeah. yes. Is that one of the more popular or? Um, well, that the downtown trash route, we do that seven days a week. Okay. So there's no wonder the, I every, see it all the every time. morning. Exactly. Okay. There's someone out doing that one, um, um, and it's popular with people who really like the downtown being social right. kind of thing. Exactly. Like you. Like me. Like I, lo you. I love. You know, doing I love I always see you talking route. to people and helping people and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we we don't get paid by the hour, so I feel like my time is my time. I'm getting paid by the job. Exactly. I can take my time, do right. my errands, right. be friendly, whatever. Well, I can I, actually attest to that with you because that's actually mm -hmm. how we met. Right. Downtown, I think it was over by Fitzwillies, yeah, and we, yeah. you know, we just started talking, and we ended up yeah. talking for like two hours. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, that's how I learned about pedal people. Yeah, it was, it was years, in the earlier stage. Yeah, that was yeah. years ago. Exactly, and that's right. So. And little known fact, folks, is that she's a good basketball player too. <laughs> we actually ended up playing basketball. She beat me. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. No. Oh. <laughs> so. Is there, and we're going to talk to the staff people and, 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 and that sort of thing, but what is, um, how does one uh, get involved with pedal people if they wanted to, um, I mean, is there like a application process or something like that? Yeah. Um, if you go to our website, pedalpeople.com, right. there's a job description and application and people can fill that out at any time and send okay. us their application, their resume. Right. And when we do hire, we hire periodically, maybe once a year or something. When we do get around to hiring, 
we'll look at the applications that have come right. in, as well as put out a call for more applications. Right. So we'll look at the applications, and there's a hiring subcommittee that will try and choose right. the best people who we think are the best right. fit, and then we'll... I think fit. <laughs> I love to ride bicycles. And then talking about bicycles, and um, folks, we are going to start talking to the staff in just a couple of minutes. You can call them the co-owners. The co-owners. Okay, that's even better. The co-owners here. Um, talk about the bicycle program or the bicycle workshops that you do, because oh, I've bike actually lab. seen you do that as well, and I think that's a, a, a wonderful service to the community here. And um, being that this is a biking community here, talk a little bit about that. Um, so every Saturday at 12 Northern Ave, it's the information is on our website. Mm -hmm. um, it's every Saturday from 11 to 2 at 12 Northern Ave. It's a, just a house. It's a basement where I set up a little workshop. Um, it's open hours. People can come. And if they need help fixing something on their bike, mm -hmm. there'll be someone there who can walk them through it so that they can learn for themselves. Um, if they know what they need to do, they just need specialized bike tools that they don't have at home, they can just come in and use the tools. Wow. Some people come just to hang out. Um, some people come to hang out and help others. Right. There's also used parts that can be scavenged and used bikes for wow. sale. Okay. Cheap, or you can fix up a bike. That's right. Like, so if I yeah. wanted a bike, I could stop on by there? Sure, yeah. We okay. might not have what you want, but we'll have something that rolls. <laughs> something that I could just take yeah. a ride on? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, well, yeah. Um, you, again, you're one of the, I think you guys are fantastic. Um, is there other businesses um, similar to this? There, aren't there models now in other parts of the country based on pedal people here in Northampton? Um, yeah, you know, you should probably ask some of the secretaries that um, different people take turns being secretaries, and so they end up taking more of the calls from right. people around the country okay. who want to do that kind of work. So they have a better sense of who's doing what. Right, there. exactly. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely do that. And um, again, I want to say that you are, from my perspective, one of the nicest people in <laughs> Northampton. I, it's always a pleasure seeing you. I always see you either talking to someone, helping someone, very much contributing to this community here. And, um, so well, thanks, with that, I, I appreciate that. And I really appreciate the work you do too. Thank so. you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Folks, don't go anywhere. We are going to talk to the co-owners of Pedal People and get some more in-depth knowledge of what they do and how they do it. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Spotlighting Paradise. I'm your host, Henry White. We're on location at Pulaski Park and we're talking with the pedal people. We're about to meet the rest of the co-owners here and we'll start to my right. We've already talked to Ruthie and you are? Hi, I'm Colby. Hey, Colby, I know you. And you are? I'm Emily. Hi, I'm Allie. Hi, Allie. Hey. I'm Brett. Hey, Brett. I'm Alex. Alex. Hey, Henry, I'm Annie. Hey, Annie. Okay, so we're going to talk to Alex, who is the other brainchild of the Pedal People, one of the co-founders, and we're going to talk about the worker cooperative business model. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's one of the, the unique aspects of your business. Sure, yeah. Um, so what we're in, back in 2002, when it was just me and Ruthie, we didn't really think about how we wanted it structured exactly but we knew we didn't want to be a traditional business where you know we were um, there were we were just the owners and other people were our employees um, we wanted more flexibility than that we felt like it would be taking advantage of people if other people didn't have a say mm -hmm. so as we grew and as we brought on other people um, we decided we wanted to figure out how to legally structure it to be cooperative right and so we did some research and we found out that you know you can structure businesses as a worker cooperative um, and Massachusetts has special laws that are wow. for that for uh, and so it took us a while it took us about a year to like figure out how our what our bylaws would be like and how we would be structured how you would become 
a worker but be in an apprenticeship for mm -hmm. nine months to a year before you became a full co-owner. Um, so we figured all, all that out and in 2006 we became officially a cooperative. Wow. I think it makes a big difference as far as our success is that, you know, it's hard work that, that we have to be out, out here in all weather and um, to know that we have an equal say in the, in the running of the business. Exactly. You know, that um, we have a great sense of ownership That's over, right. over the business. So it's not just another job that you might quit at any time or decide yeah, I'm not really going to do, do this today. That's right. Make, make You're personally invested in there. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, that's been really good, and it's been really good to be part of a bigger cooperative movement. There are several hundred worker co-ops in the U.S. and a lot more world, worldwide. And um, so we're really trying to build the help other businesses start. We um, are part of the Valley Alliance of Worker mm -hmm. Cooperatives, mm -hmm. and so you know, we're really giving advice and information and contributing money toward um, helping other worker co-ops grow or existing businesses convert to worker co-ops. Right. And speaking of other uh, businesses and, and worker co-ops across the country, am I correct that you guys um, really helped or became a model to other worker cooperatives like this across the country? Yeah, there are a few. There's one that um, in Philadelphia called right. the Pedal Co-op, and they, wow. they based their bylaws and such very pretty strongly off of ours. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of other people who, we get a lot of calls of people interested, and a few people have started um, different like compost pickup businesses and, and things like that. Nice. Um, but in some ways, we're in a pretty unique situation here because of the, the recycling and trash situation that it's a fairly, um, for this size city, most cities this size, I think, would have some kind of municipal pickup, but mm. our city doesn't, so we can fit right into that system. Right. So it's, you know, you kind of have to look for a little bit of a different business model if you're trying to start something like this somewhere Exactly. Else. Yeah, it's definitely a unique, uh, definitely a unique business, but uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think I'm going to come back to you. I want to talk to Brett here for a second. And um, f you folks out there, I'm sure you've always asked certain questions about the pedal people. And um, there's probably certain uh, beliefs or myths about, uh, or misconceptions even, about the pedal people. So I'm going to ask Brett to clarify some things or talk about some of the <laughs> myths sure. with the pedal people sure. here. Sure. Some people think that we are a nonprofit but we are a business. We structure it fairly. Um, Alex just talked about all the pieces that we put in place for the fairness. Um, so we pay ourselves, there's mm -hmm. no boss, um, and we take care of ourselves pretty well, I think. Isn't that great not to have a boss? It is, it is, <laughs> it is. It is. It, you know, it's, it, it creates a, an atmosphere where everybody's contributing and everybody feels like they are being taken care of. That's right. Um, you know, some people think that we're doing this for volunteer work and we're not. Um, some people don't know that we have the residential pickups. Some people don't know we have the downtown trash pickups. That's right. You know, I think since it's grown, you know, we haven't done a lot of advertising. And mm -hmm. We haven't done a lot of spending to try to make a big business. Um, some people don't know a lot about all the little bits of it. You know, the CSA shares and the, the diaper service right. and all the little bits. But um, even moving jobs. That's all, right. All mattresses That's and right. couches and all That's that. That's right. Um, so you, know, you guys do a, a, a lot. We do a lot. Absolutely. We do a lot. And, you know, we would, we'll do, we're, like as Ruthie said in the beginning, we're a hauling business. So yeah. we'll haul what we're paid to haul. <laughs> right. And if you want to know more about what they do and, and more of the service and, and, and even clarify some of the misconceptions, you can actually go on their website. I think it was mentioned earlier, pedalpeople.com. You can definitely go on there. You can like them on Facebook as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, Brad. I want to talk to my buddy over here, Allie. Allie was, uh, took one of the cameras and got some good footage of a, um, of a, a, a day in the life of a pedal person co-owner. Uh, co How was it for you? It was a lot of fun, yeah. Annie and I did it together, which was a lot of fun, figuring out how it worked and, um, yeah, thinking about what you'd want to highlight and what's fun to see. Um, it was pretty simple. We just right. showed a normal pickup. Okay. Now, how did you get to um, 
become a Pedal People co-owner? What was the incentive for you? It, well, and, and along with that, is there like, um, talk about the process. Was there like a strength and agility testing thing that goes on? Because everybody is so fit and strong. And so talk to us, talk to the folks out there and tell them. Yeah, well, I feel really lucky. Um, part of it was timing for me. When I graduated from college, I actually led a cross-country bike trip, and uh, that's sort of where my passion for biking started. And uh, shortly after I got back, I sort of started to get to know some of the pedal people and saw that they were going to be hiring. Um, but generally, when they do a hiring process, um, I think they had about 50 applications come in. Mm. So I was really lucky that I was chosen um, to be interviewed and I was originally trained as a sub, uh, which was great. I was able to fill in for a couple people and start that way and uh, I was persistent. I really wanted, mm. I did, it was part of a worker cooperative in college and being part of a co-op is really important to me. Right. Um, and because I have such a passion for biking, this really was a perfect fit. Exactly. Um, yeah, and I think I've been really lucky and that this business has been a great match for me so I've been doing this for a couple of years and don't see myself leaving anytime soon right well great well thank you uh, you know I'm gonna ask you Emily if you don't mind um, what impact do you think this type of uh, business has on the environment oh, that's a great question well um I actually came to pedal people with a background in uh, architecture and like I was always thinking about from that background, like how we can make like a, a better impact on the world around us. And I was really frustrated because it seemed hard. There's like mm. so many, the, stru the structures of how our society are set up, it makes it hard to make a really big impact. It's mm -hmm. really hard to move beyond just your individual self. So I think one thing that's really cool about Pedal People is we're just so visible. And people see us everywhere we go and they see that it's possible to do things by bike. Uh, really big things, moving really heavy things. And I think it gives it gives people a sense that, you know, maybe I could do this too. Maybe I could at least bike somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe you know, hauling a giant trailer looks intimidating, but um, I think it really opens up possibilities. Um, yeah, in people's heads. It, like, really, it's, it's yeah. almost like a paradigm shift. Absolutely. Like, a different way. That That's right. Exist. That's right. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Kobe a similar question, but how did you actually get, in start, get started with Pedal People? Um, similar to Allie's story, I um, just lived in Northampton and saw pedal people biking around town often. Um, I just got more into biking during college and um, when I graduated I knew that I wanted to stay around here and I knew that I, um, if at all possible, I wanted to be part of a worker cooperative because mm. um, I was also involved with one in college. Um, and it just seemed like a dream come true right. to <laughs> bike for my job. Um, right. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. We see you biking around town a lot, mm -hmm. which is great. So, folks, you have met the co-owners of Pedal People, and hopefully you gain a lot more knowledge about what the Pedal People are about. Annie. Can you talk, we're, and we're about to wrap up folks, but can you tell the folks out there um, what's gonna be happening in your 10 year anniversary celebration coming up in um, just a couple of months? That's right, September 22nd will be our 10 year anniversary yes. party right here in Pulaski Park. Mm -hmm. um, we will we will be here, all the pedal people will be here with our bikes, with our trailers. Um, we, we can hook up some trailer rides for people. We might, uh, we'll have food to give away. Will it be a um, bouncy bounce um, house out here and that kind of? That's a rumor that uh, is not <laughs> yet, we can't, we can't corroborate that rumor just right, yet, Henry. Right, right, okay. So we'll just have, we'll have to keep <laughs> some things under our hats. Keep that on the down low, folks, but if it is, <laughs> come on out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, keep it, keep an eye out. It's also, it's also international or world car free day. Oh, wow. So it's a great day to come out and then Perfect. celebrate with your uh, local uh, bike uh, bike cooperative. Um, and it should be a really great time, really family-friendly fun. Stay tuned. Exactly. You heard it, folks, right here. September 22nd. September 22nd is Pedal People's 10-year anniversary. Make sure you come out. It'll be right here at Pulaski Park. We're going to start wrapping up. First, I want to thank you all again for coming out and, um, and, and making this happen. Thank you, Ruthie, for being so diligent and um, being the nice person that you are to, to help make this happen. Um, I also want to thank the staff uh, at NCTV, 
the staff and crew here, you guys are awesome. You do a wonderful job. You make us look good. So um, again, if you want to know more about Pedal People, go to pedalpeople.com. And they're also on Facebook. If you have any show, uh, show comments for me, or um, just spotlightingparadise at gmail.com, or go to Northampton Community TV, or northamptontv.org, I'm going to leave you with a quote. Strength and growth come only through continuous effort and struggle. Until next time on Spotlighting Paradise, peace and blessings and keep the faith.